Hello, everybody, and welcome to hell. Um, uh, hello, everybody, and welcome. This is the apostate prophet. Uh, it's it's a red light behind me because yesterday we had a live stream where we talked about hell, and I wanted to make it uh, as hellish as possible. So, yeah, that's that's yeah, yes, that's what's going on here. That's what's up. Uh, but anyway, good morning, and how is everybody doing? I think and I hope everybody is all right. Today I want to review a conversation that took place between Pierce Morgan and Mossab Hassan Youssef, who is a for the son of a Hamas co-founder and who is also a former Hamas member and an informant. Uh, an Israeli spy, a former Israeli spy, uh, and he has some really good stuff to tell. I think I didn't. Wa I personally didn't watch the episode. Nowadays, I like to go completely cold into um, whatever we, we video I want to watch. But uh, yes, that's what we are going to do. That's what we're going to do here right now. Uh, Branja said, Espero que estés bien. I have no idea what that means, but um, but I agree entirely, completely. Uh, D. Bordeaux said, The Green Prince, yes, that's his name, that's his, 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 his nickname, The Green Prince. Why, actually, I don't even know, I don't remember. But hey, let's open, let's open it up, let's see what's here. Let's see what we can find here right now. <clears throat> Let's see what's going on. The video starts right like this. It looks like his palms are sweaty. Knees weak, arms are heavy. There's vomit on his sweat already. Mom's spaghetti is nervous. But in the service, he looks calm and ready to drop bombs. But he keeps on forgetting what he wrote down. I'm sorry, I just watched 8 Mile and... Uh, that's what's in my head. All right. Um, okay. 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 So. <laughs> uh, yes. So a quick background of this um, to this guy that we are about to watch. His name is uh, Mossab Hassan Yusuf. He is known as the son of Hamas or the Green Prince or just uh, a guy who is the son of a Hamas co-founder. He spent a lot of time in Hamas, inside Hamas, and worked for Shin Bet, the Israeli security agency, where he uh, gave a lot of information on um on Hamas activities and prevented lots of attacks. And in fact, um, I think according to to Israeli handlers, it's like lots of people owe this guy their lives and they don't even know about it um, because he prevented lots of attacks. He And he himself, by the way, he converted to Christianity during his whole um, his whole work as a spy and all that. Let's see. I'm joined now by Mossab uh, Hassan Youssef. Uh, Mossab, great to see you. Um, it's an extraordinary story, yours. Uh, you were the eldest son of a man who was one of the co-founders of Hamas. And indeed, for your early formative years, you worked alongside your, your father. So you got a great insight into Hamas. Tell me this from the start. What were the intended plans for Hamas when it was founded, when it started, when it developed? What was the plan? You know, since its establishment, uh, Hamas uh, uh, has one goal in mind, which is annihilating the state of Israel. Like the best, it's a compromise that they could do is having a truce for 15 years, a ceasefire for 15 years as maximum you know, but with no guarantee how they will act after. It's absurd. Uh, it's not a secret. I love his accent. But um, he's presenting a very interesting, a very important point right at the very beginning. And yes, CC, I agree, his book is amazing. Uh, it's called Son of Hamas. Get it, read it. Um, 
But yeah, no, he's making the most important point at the very beginning, which is that Hamas's goal is to annihilate Israel. And not only to annihilate Israel, from the very beginning, it was to get rid of Jews, to remove Jews, um, to remove Jews altogether from that region or later on, uh, you know, in the whole world. And, um, and any kind of peace agreement or any kind of truce that they would make would be only temporary. In fact, um, I will get to the, to the current Hamas charter in a second as we watch this guy. That Hamas wants to destroy the state of Israel. They cannot accept Israel or accept uh, Israel's right to exist. What was the point uh, that you decided to get out of there, to, to flee this world, this environment you've been brought up in? You know, I, I have I have m many reasons. Since I was a child, I asked my father many questions about Hamas delusions, about their brutality, about their abuse of power. And always he justified, you know, their uh, position. Then I was imprisoned with Hamas. I spent about 27 months in Israeli prisons where Hamas was torturing their own members, our own people within Israeli prisons. They killed actually and tortured hundreds of prisoners. Uh, and this is Jack Smith said sounds kind of fascist. No, 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 not at all. Like Hamas are just freedom fighters. It's because Jews are colonizers and Hamas are just fighting for their freedom, which is why they have in mind the whole uh, annihilation of Jews and the r removal of Israel and the torture of their own people and so on. Uh, I, I'm not even sure, I'm not sure if he will go into detail, but uh, there is no way that you can describe the atrocities that Hamas committed in prison, according to him and his book, um, just in these, in these few minutes. But uh, just one of the things that I vividly remember is that they seek out fellow Hamas members who are in prison, frame them as, in, uh, as informants if they don't like something about them, although they are not informants at all, and then inflict extreme torture on those, for, on those fellow members, including like uh, driving, um, you know, stabbing their fingers you know, between their fingernails and their fingers, stabbing them there repeatedly to make them confess to things which uh, are not even, are not true and stuff like that. And at first he goes along with it because he thinks, okay, I, I guess this is a, I guess this is an extreme measure here, but then he gets really, really sick of that and thinks, how are these the good guys? Um. <clears throat> So, 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 so. Hamas Charter 2017. The Palestinian cause in its essence is a cause of unoccupied land and displaced people. The right of the Palestinian refugees and the displaced to return to their homes from which they were banished or were banned from returning, whether in the lands occupied in 1948 or in 1967, that is the whole of Palestine, uh, is a natural right, both individual and collective. Uh, lands occupied in 1948 means uh, <laughs> the existence of Israel altogether. So all of the Palestine, all of the region of Palestine. This right is confirmed by all divine laws as well as by the basic principle of human rights and international law. It is an inalienable right and cannot be dispensed by any party, whether Palestinian, Arab, or international. Divine law. But here is the important point. Hamas believes that no part of the land of Palestine shall be compromised or conceded irrespective of the causes, the circumstances, and the pressures, and no matter how long the occupation lasts. So no part will be compromised or conceded. And they already um, remarked that all of Palestine means all of Palestine, so no Israel. Hamas rejects any alternative to the full and complete liberation of Palestine. From the river to the sea, meaning all of it, no Israel. However, without compromising its rejection of the Zionist entity, and without relinquishing any Palestinian rights, Hamas considers the establishment of a fully sovereign and independent Palestinian state with Jerusalem as its capital along the lines of the 4th of June 1967. 
with the return of the refugees and the displaced to their homes from which they were expelled to be a formula of national consensus. Now, it looks like when you just read this part, it's, it's such a it's such an, I don't know, sneaky, evil, messed up <clears throat> agenda here. But it looks like when you read this part, oh, so they could agree to a to a two state solution to a 1967 border solution. But how messed up is it? Like this is in the, in the same article here. It says we will not ever ever recognize Israel. We will not give ever any part of Palestine from the river to the sea. But we agree, you know, for now to agree to a uh, to a Palestinian state along the 1967 borders. So what this basically means is, yes, we would, um, you know, accept a small Palestinian state along these borders and for all the refugees to return to all of their homes, including in Palestine and in Israel. And then we will still aim to take all of it later on. Now, if you are in Israel's place, why in the world would you accept this? <laughs> why in the world would you accept this? Why in the world would you agree to give them a, uh, a state uh, when they say, yeah, this is only temporary. Later, we're going to take all of it and kick you all out. It's insane. This is the Hamas agenda. This is when I start asking myself the question, what if Hamas become the ruler at some point? What will they do to our people? And uh, many years later, Hamas became the ruler of Gaza. And uh, I wasn't surprised uh, by their br uh, brutality. When you heard what happened on October the 7th, what was your feeling about that? Look, as I told you, I'm not surprised by Hamas brutality, but I was surprised by the scale of their attack. You know, not to this degree, wiping out entire communities, you know, messing with a nuclear power, the most powerful country in the region, a country with a, a trauma, great trauma from the past, with a, a memory of a Holocaust and uh, all the Nazis did in the past century, you they opened uh, the AP. If you see this message, can you please invite Musa Yusuf to an interview with you? Uh, I tried reaching out to him. I only did it personally. I could reach out to him on a, on different through people who know him, I guess. But I tried reaching out to him. I didn't get a response yet. But yes, I would love to have him on here the gates of hell on the Palestinian people. This is how irresponsible this group people are, you know, that they are willing to actually sacrifice many Palestinian children, the entire Palestinian people, and use them as a fuel to just achieve their ideological uh, agendas, their religious agendas. They are careless. They don't care for the human life. We have to separate between what so-called Palestinian cause and Hamas cause. Hamas cause is a sick one. It's coming from the pit of hell, you know, and they need to be removed uh, from power. This is my message as an ex-Hamas member, as a son. It is coming from the pit of hell, he said, from the pit of hell. And I, so when I, when I talk about the current agenda of Hamas, I'm only mentioning the 19, uh, the, the 2017 um, charter, right? And um, those who have followed the story of Hamas further know that Hamas came into existence in 1988 with the explicit goal of eradicating Jews. And I cannot stress this enough for those who don't know, who just joined the conversation who went on TikTok and heard people say, free Palestine. And now they're like, yeah, free Palestine. This is so cool. I want to get a free Palestine shirt. Um, Hamas is not anything like those TikTok videos. Not at all. What Hamas is, is right here in their original charter, Article 7, where it says, the Islamic resistance movement, da 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 
jihad operations of the Muslim Brotherhood, if the links have been distant from each other, and if obstacles placed by those who are the lackeys of Zionism and the way of the fighters obstruct the continuation of the struggle, the Islamic resistance movement, which is what Hamas means, aspires to the realization of Allah's promise. No matter how long that should take, the Prophet, Allah bless him and grant him salvation, has said the day of judgment will not come about until Muslims will fight the Jews. When the Jew will hide behind stones and trees, the stones and trees will say, Oh Muslim, servant of Allah, there is a Jew behind me, come and kill him. Only the Gargat tree would not do that because it is one of the trees of the Jews. According to Muhammad, according to Islam, according to Muslims, according to Islamists, jihadists, their goal was all along to eradicate the Jews and to eradicate Israel. But then you have these guys nowadays on TikTok and uh, other channels are like, no, it's just the resistance movement. Of course they will act like this if you oppress them. <laughs> Jews existing is oppression to them. You can't do anything. of one of Hamas founders that enough of this. If we don't stop them now, the next war is going to be deadlier. And only God knows what will happen next if Hamas is not finished as soon as possible. Mossab, how many regular Palestinians, particularly in Gaza, do you think sympathize with Hamas or indeed fully support them? You know, once Hamas is removed from power, we are going to witness people celebrating in Gaza. I guarantee you that. Mm. The people of Gaza are oppressed for so long, and they had to endure siege, they had to endure violence, many wars, uh, uh, for the sake of Hamas' uh, uh, lust for power. And for Hamas now, here is a very difficult thing to address, right? Um, so he is he makes this um, he proposes this idea that the that the that the that the people in Gaza are oppressed by Hamas, and that if Hamas is destroyed, people would celebrate. Now, we, when we look at polls, when we look at surveys and uh, at, at, at research, we see that um, currently Hamas still has the support of. Uh, the people in Gaza, and that more than half of people in Gaza support Hamas. Um, and that needs to be pointed out. So it's not just Hamas. And the population is not just, uh, you know, uh, completely oppressed and they are, you know, held captive. They don't know what to do. But there is some truth to it, to what he's saying, which is um, only half of the population you know, getting behind this massive terrorist organization is not necessarily a very big amount of support because I mean, you, you have to consider that almost half of it, almost half of the population does not agree with Hamas. And we even have polls of people who agree with Hamas. They say Hamas should calm down. Hamas should stop saying, destroy Israel, destroy Israel to hell with Israel, and so on. And he points out quite often that uh, Hamas in the region is like a, a big bully. Like they go around and they don't allow people to live their lives. They condition people in a certain way. They are like a morality police. I mean, there was uh, several years ago, Hamas destroyed a, um, a swimming, a water park. I'm serious. It sounds ridiculous, but Hamas actually, there was a water park in Gaza that was established to allow people to have fun together, you know, to allow, uh, you know, families, all kinds of people to go out to go out and swim, like the average water park that you have in the West. And the problem is that they allowed mixed swimming there. So women and men could go together and swim there. Hamas went there and destroyed it. No, they, uh, they, they, they shut it down. Hamas went there and shut it down. And then a few days later, it was completely destroyed, burnt. So, <laughs> yes, uh, there is support for Hamas. But you also have to consider that Hamas is also a, a big bully 
in Gaza that makes sure everyone supports them and that does not allow for people to enjoy their lives, to have fun and all of that. It's, they are messed up. It's political ambition. When this comes to an end, I promise you that the Palestinian people, first of all, will thank Israel for what they did. Second, the uh, idea of annihilating the Jews and the state of Israel. Annihilating, I love his accent. Uh, apparently, it wasn't a few years ago. It was actually twenty. It was actually fourteen years, thirteen years ago. But yeah, this is a crazy water park. Um, was a water park in the Gaza Strip that served the territory's small, wealthy class. The park opened in May 2010 and was burned down by masked men in September 2010 after being closed by the... Wait, it was burned down within the same year? That's funny. Being closed by the Ham Palestinian Hamas de facto government for allowing men and women to mingle. It opened. It just opened in 2010 for people to have fun to enjoy their lives, something fun to do in Gaza for a change. And Hamas was like, no, this is haram. Shut it down. So they shut it down. They shut it down. They said, you're finished already. Look at me. Look at me. You know you're done. That's what they said. And then some other people after it was shut down, went there and actually burnt the whole place down. They were like, we cannot allow this filth to exist and to ever come back. So let's destroy it completely. We're proud of that. And that's how they treat fun over there. That's their understanding of fun. Will be dropped forever. You know, because Hamas is the, you can say, the last experiment uh, of uh, adapting violence, trying to annihilate and destroy the state of Israel. This didn't work for Yasser Arafat. It took him 40 years to realize this. And Hamas has been trying for 35 years to destroy Israel. Finally, I hope that they will come to this understanding that Israel is going nowhere. If they insist on annihilating Israel, and of course, if Iran keeps on insisting... They really act like this. Hamas acts like the water park was a brothel or a casino. It's... <laughs> It is really bad, though. Like uh, in, in Islamist, among Islamists, uh, establishing a water park where when men and women can swim together, that's like <gasps> it's evil. It's evil. It's like satanic. It's evil. <laughs> in, uh, on this goal, this means the destruction of the entire region. This is the only and certain outcome of this because Israel is going nowhere. How do we get to peace from here? You know, this time, I'm afraid that war is the only way to peace. Uh, because if Hamas is not removed from power, uh, then they will uh, build more military. They will build uh, longer uh, range missiles. And the next attack, the next war is going to be deadlier. The use of force is the last resort. You can find... You know, um, over the years, I thought a lot about the whole... Um, Palestine Israel conflict and I was and I wondered what the best solution would be people always talk about you know the which, which solution you want to uh, you think will work the one state solution a two state solution a solution where um you know Palestinians have for Palestinians have their own state or one where they are all part of of an Israeli state um if there is any peace possible with Gaza ever I I don't know but I I feel like I can quite confidently say now that I think after everything we have seen over the years, after everything we have seen over the last uh, two, three weeks, this whole month, I just don't believe that it is possible for, um, for Gaza to ever establish a proper government to be independent and to rule in peace and to coexist with their neighbor. So maybe, maybe a one-state solution under Israel is the only solution that actually works. Or Israel goes in, removes Hamas completely, puts a government in place, and changes things directly. But that doesn't work either. I mean, the, the current plan is that they want to... Um, so Hamas is done. Hamas is finished. There is no way back here. They want to go in completely, destroy Hamas, uh, 
get rid of uh, all kinds of Hamas rule and install a different government and uh, have a much wider separation and try to disconnect completely from that and leave it alone to prevent something like this from ever happening again. But where, where exactly does that go? I don't know. I think Israel could have or should have, if it was possible, built a, a, a wall that is from the ground to the to outer space <laughs> and just completely leave that part of land alone. Like, get them out of here. Get the hell out of here! And not allow them to exist alongside them when they want to destroy Israel. I think, I don't know, they tried everything so far. And I can't blame them if they actually just if, if they uh, if they say, hey, Egypt, whatever other place, take these people. We're taking over. I don't know. What else is the solution? Find this in every culture. And unfortunately, now Hamas left Israel and the free world as well with no choice uh, but to fight them and put an end for their violence. Uh, many civilians are dying, I understand this. Their blood is on the hands of Hamas, and Hamas only. It's, it's interesting you say that, because a lot of pro-Palestinians who I've had on the show in the last two weeks don't accept that argument. They say the blood of the civilians in Gaza is exclusively on the hands of Israel, and that Israel's waged uh, a repressive occupation for many decades. Um, there's been a prison camp for Gazans for a long, long time. And that, that has created the environment through which a terror group like Hamas can thrive and indeed win an election, as they did in 2005. Do you buy into any of that? I mean, do you think that Israel has overreacted already to what happened to them? Their argument is, what is proportion when you have a terror attack like that on your people. Look, I'm really curious what he's going to say about this. I know lots of people get really outraged when you suggest that this is, uh, that the response by Israel is is is, um, is normal um, and that the human lives are um, the fault of, or the, the loss of life is the fault of uh, Hamas, that they have blood on their hands. I know that this guy doesn't hold back. He just says whatever he wants to say. So I'm really curious. And yeah, Deanna, I really didn't watch the interview. No, I don't know why. I don't know why you still, why you're asking me. I really didn't watch it. <laughs> why are you blaming me? You said, come on, AP, did you really not watch it? No, I really didn't watch it. I, I want to um, I want to watch it when I go live and then react to it. But yeah. So Hamas is in power, is in charge. They know very well that there is a clear warning in place. If they attack Israel, Israel will counterattack and will bomb. If they shoot rockets, missiles at Israel, Israel will shoot back and people will die. They know this exactly. They know this precisely. This happens all the time. They shoot missiles, which are completely... Uh, without target they just randomly shoot into israel and target anybody israel then shoots back with targeted airstrikes and despite knowing all of this they decided that it's a fantastic thing to do to invade israel and to kill civilians indiscriminately to kill 1400 people and then they want to retreat and cry about the outcome i'm sorry but you have a very clear warning in place. The warning is there is nothing we can do. It's very clear. We have to do this. If you attack us, we will attack back. If we then attack massively and try to directly target and oppress the people, and we have footage of it, of Hamas going around and shooting civilians directly and torturing them, do, doing all kinds of messed up things to them, burning families inside their cars. We have videos of it. What did you expect would happen? The response to that will be Israel will now inflict hell upon you. And that is not the fault of Israel. You had the warning from the very beginning. This is like 
uh, I know some people think uh, it was not appropriate, but at the end of the Second World War, it was with uh, with with Hiroshima and, and Nagasaki. Uh, the logic of the United States was Japan needs to stop with their goal of uh, establishing this Japanese empire and oppressing the people of the world and fighting and uh, making all kinds of sacrifices. Uh, surrender now or we will drop a bomb that will be worse than anything you have ever seen and lots of people will die. And they didn't listen, didn't listen, didn't listen, didn't care about lives. America dropped the bombs and the war was over. This is kind of like that. You don't want to end lives you don't want to take so many lives you don't want to do these things but if the other side keeps pushing and keeps pushing and keeps pushing and will not make peace what else are you going to do there's nothing that israel can do there's nothing else that israel could have done what should they do should, should they do should they say okay no blockade uh, no issues, do whatever you want, coexist here, we'll even take down the fence for you guys. Is is that what they should have done? <laughs> With this organization that wants to eradicate them. People are ridiculous. Ridiculous. Rahim said, AB, what is your personal opinion about the Israeli government's actions? Depends which one, which action you are talking about. I think some things are a little bit over the top and Israel could be calmer and easier with some things but with their retaliation right now i don't condemn it at all i understand it and i blame hamas for it since my childhood uh and i am hearing the stories from pro-palestine and from those who are using what's so called the palestinian cause they care the least for the Palestinian children and their future. You know, I, I am the legit, uh, legitimate representative of the Palestinian children. The child within me speaks. I don't want somebody coming from London or somebody coming from the other side of the world to tell me what is the struggle of the Palestinian children. The Palestinian children, the Palestinian society has been hijacked by these criminals and anybody who takes side, uh, their side is participating in their crime. This is my answer to those people. And for the civilian casualties, etc. you know, first of all, Hamas is using, and it's very clearly, it's a fact that Hamas used civilians as human sheets. It's a fact. Then it's a fact that Israel call and warn civilians to evacuate buildings before they strike them. But in the meantime, Hamas put roadblocks to stop civilians from evacuating to safe zones. This is actually a fact. This is a fact. It's been confirmed, but no, people don't want to see that. What's also interesting is that when this guy comes and speaks and talks about the things that Hamas does, the things that Hamas did, people get awfully quiet. They don't come out and refute him because they know he's speaking the truth. Hamas knows he's speaking the truth. Hamas knows very well that this guy was in there, among them, one of them, for a long time. They can't refute anything this guy says, which is why they choose to be quiet and choose to ignore it. It's like you try to be, you, you try to lie to the public and try to present a side of you that is completely fake, but then uh, somebody who knows you very well and who was part of you comes out and speaks, and then you're like, okay, okay, let's just make this quietly go away. Let's make this quietly go away. That's this guy. Free thing said, why he looked very angry. I think if I was in his place, I would have lost my mind by now. <laughs> Hamas single misfire killed hundreds of refugees taking shelter at a hospital and they blamed Israel. What are we talking about here? Israel is a democracy. Israel is accountable. Israel is not thirsty for the Palestinian blood. In the meantime, Israel is capable of wiping out Arab capitals in seconds. Why Israel does not attempt to abuse its power? But why when the Arabs have just a little bit of power, a couple of missiles, 
they misuse power by launching them at civilians and kill them in their living rooms. Thank you. Thank you, man. Absolutely. There's no exaggeration. It is not an exaggeration. Israel has the power to do all kinds of massacres, but they don't. People say, oh, Israel gets away with anything. Israel can do whatever they want because everyone knows the world stands with Israel. America supports Israel, so they can do whatever they want. Okay, if they can do whatever they want, why don't they just wipe you all out, right? We see what happens when Hamas gets a little bit of opportunity, a little bit of power. We see what happens when they have a little bit of power. And just imagine it. I mean, if, if you... if. Let's think about it. If Hamas had the very same power, suddenly, if they were given the power that Israel has right now, everybody knows Hamas would create a bloodbath, a complete massacre. They would not stop at all. We know this. If you think they would be just as peaceful as Israel and give the other side chances, you're delusional. I'm sorry. <laughs> You are simply delusional. If Hamas had the power, if they had the means that Israel has, they would wipe out Israel as quickly as possible. They would not stop. And what do you think would happen after they wiped out Israel? This guy says it, says it best. He, he says it in his book as well, which is that um, if Israel today or tomorrow packed their things and left, and all of this land belonged to the Palestinians, what exactly would we do? We would, first off, oppress and fight each other, which would possibly never end. And if it ends, we would start picking fights with others. We have a fundamental problem, and we need to stop blaming Israel. We invited this upon our heads, and the rest of the world, if they don't know, the reality on the ground, it's better than they shut up. Mossab, your passion uh, and your anger is very palpable here and certainly very different to most of the pro-Palestinian voices I've had. And you know, I sense the Palestinian plight of its people is very much in your heart. Do you still have contact with, with any of your family? This is irrelevant right now. I don't have any contact with my family and I don't care anymore. You know, enough bloodshed and enough involvement from people who don't care. They're just uh, warriors on keyboard, you know, and they're just the storming. Uh, wow. Wow. Okay. I want to see that again. This is, this guy means it. Enough involvement. And I with the plight of its people is very much in your heart. Do you still have contact with, with any of your family? This is irrelevant right now. I don't have any contact with my family and I don't care anymore. You know, enough bloodshed and enough involvement from people who don't care. They're just uh, warriors on keyboard, you know, and they're just the storming uh, world capitals saying free Palestine, free Palestine. They don't know what the hell Palestine. Wow, this guy has had enough. <laughs> he doesn't even want to bother with this, with this irrelevant question. Palestine is. I am Palestine, and I say it's enough of Hamas. It's enough of the corrupt leaderships that they are killing our people, misleading them to hell. It's enough of that. We don't want Palestinian state. I don't want Palestinian state. Palestinian children need education. They need security. They need life. This is what they need. They don't need another corrupt Arab regime. Is it possible to get... <laughs> Wow, 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 wow. I really didn't watch this. I'm watching this for the first time right now. It's, wow, wow. The guy's sick of it. I saw him make a post, which is like, I'm losing my patience and speaking about the conflict and telling people to shut up and stop saying free Palestine, free Palestine. You don't know what in the world you're talking about. Man, preach, preach. Wow. Get rid of Hamas in the way that Israel is currently trying to do through uh, airstrike bombardments and, and it is planned now an imminent ground invasion. Is that the best way to do it? Or is there a danger of radicalizing a lot more young Palestinians to the Hamas cause in the process? 
Listen to this. We are going to remove Hamas from power. Remember my words, okay? And Hamas did not only bring the wrath of Israel over Gaza. Hamas brought the wrath of God. We are going to remove them from power and we are going to persecute their leaders and we are going to bring them, bring them to justice and the world will witness their punishment. And everyone who, who take their side today in this state of confusion, thinking that this is a joke, I tell those people that you are going to regret taking the side of Hamas. You are going to take the, uh, to regret taking the side of those criminals who are uh, killing uh, the Palestinian people. Oh, man, thank you. I, I, uh, I wish, I don't know, I wish this was louder. I wish, this is, Daniel S said, too bad this video has 700,000 views while interviews with 9-11 sympathizers like Hassan Piker have 20 million. I think, to be honest, Hassan Piker had, doesn't have, he only has like 5 million or something like that. But seriously, this is what, this this is what people need to see. This should be the most watched video on Piers Morgan at the moment. Look at this channel. Look at look at these views. You have these interviews that he had recently with all of these people. You have this this idiot here, this imbecile. Imbecile. Seven million views. He didn't add anything to the conversation. The whole conversation was just about him and his ego. And why are you stuttering? I am educated. I'm an academic. Then came this clown. Bassem Yusuf, who just made a joke out of all of it and didn't present anything of value. Nearly 20 million views. Then came Hassan Piker, who was just, who talked like a complete idiot about the whole thing. He didn't make any sense at all. Then came Cenk. I didn't watch even half of it. He was just yelling, and I thought, oh, shut up, man. Then I saw this guy. Pierce had to eventually kick him off. Two million views. This guy, this is the interview. This is the interview everybody needs to see. Stop with these clowns who just repeat the same message over and over again and who lie and who don't want to acknowledge what's actually happening in the region. Stop with all of that. Go to this guy, Mossab Hassan Youssef, this guy's interview. This one should have 20 million views, not that Basim Yusuf clown. Oh, man. Mossab, you were born in Ramallah. That's your home. Do you dream of going home one day? Is that something you still aspire to do? I prefer not to ask to answer this question. I understand. Mossab, thank you very much indeed for joining me. Um, it's it's Extraordinary to hear your story. And it's uh, a remarkable pitch that you make to the people of Palestine. And it's one that um, they will hear and will see their reaction. But I appreciate you joining me. Thank you very much. Thank you. Man. Uh, you know, I I see people on the, uh, on the internet, uh, I don't know, on, on these social media platforms go like, uh, oh, free Palestine, did you know Palestine, digga, 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 did you know Israel, uh, you know, colonizers and this and that, you know, guys, it's just like this and this and that. And I think, shut the hell up, man, shut up. And I wonder how this guy feels when he sees people around the world in ignorance, in stupidity, side with uh, Hamas, because they don't know anything, but they think this is currently what's what's in fashion. So that's what I should do. I wonder if my favorite online store has a Free Palestine shirt now. And why is Kim Kardashian not wearing a Free Palestine shirt? This is really, really embarrassing, very cringe right now. That's how people are acting. And it's it's fucking, it, it is. And I wonder how this guy feels about it. You see how he feels. Oh. You're sick. You're sick. Yeah, I had to push that button just to let it out. Hey, seriously, I haven't, I have repeatedly again and again stated my admiration for this guy, uh, for Mosab Hassan Yusuf. I think he is an actual hero. 
he is a hero. I don't just think it. I know he is a hero. He is a hero. He says what needs to be said. He was in there. He worked for Hamas. He didn't type garbage on your smartphone or your keyboards or anything like that. He was inside Hamas. He worked with them. He went to jail for suspected terrorism. He was tortured in jail by the Israeli interrogation. And he, is, he has no issue admitting that. In his book, he has no issue admitting that. He was arrested because of uh, because calls were intercepted where he's talking with his cousin and his cousin says to him, hey, I got the weapons, but they don't work. And he says, shut up, shut up. Don't talk to me about this on the phone. And a little bit later, the Israeli security agency that tracks the calls arrests him, takes him to jail, and they actually torture him there uh, to make him admit that he is a terrorist. And later on, he doesn't blame them because he knows they knew very well that they listened to him and they heard him be in possession of weapons. Later, he then admits to them that he did indeed get weapons, but that they were just for self-protection and all of that. Despite all of the torture that he went through for a long time, he then sat down and decided these guys are not the bad guys. It's, it's my own guy, my own people who torture for pleasure, for their ego, for messed up things that are the enemy. Israel just wants to end their tyranny. So he decides to become part of it. I don't know. I don't even want to speak further on this because I don't want to misrepresent anything this guy says. Just get his book. It's called Son of Hamas. Get it. Read it. Open your eyes. Open your eyes and say no to Hamas. Oh, man. I love this guy. <laughs> I really love this guy. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. <clears throat> I don't support anyone. Most of I don't support anyone. I just want to know why did Israel take more and more land of Palestinian people? Let us start there. Uh, I can give you a very brief uh, summary of that, which is Israel was established in the land rightfully. The Arabs didn't accept it, so they attacked Israel. Israel won the wars in self-defense and then said, well, you attack us, you don't want our existence. Okay, then we will just take more. Then we will just take more. That was the result of the 1948 war, very, very briefly. And another war, another war, another war, another attack on Israel, and they took more land, another attack on Israel, they lost land, another attack on Israel, they won land. This is like a very dumbed down summary of what happened. <laughs> and at one point, Israel was in charge of the entirety of the land which you want to call Palestine. They were in charge of, uh, of, of Gaza and the West Bank. It was all occupied. On the map, it was all a possession of Israel. But Israel wanted to get rid of it and wanted to give governance of it to Egypt and to Jordan. Egypt and Jordan didn't accept it. So Israel gave those two places a sense of autonomy and said, have your own government work toward independence. So Israel is the one that actually gave Palestinians land to govern. Pal Israel was in a place to get to take all of it and to keep all of it forever and ever. But Israel decided not to do that. Israel decided to give them the land back. And this here actually shows it very, very well. This image shows it very well. People often share this, this picture here. They say, look, Palestine was, was like this. Then Israel came with the UN plan. And then 
Palestine was reduced to this. Then Israel reduced Palestine to this. And then they reduce it to this. And next it will be completely gone. This is complete propaganda. It's complete nonsense, completely wrong. What happened is that there was a British mandate of Palestine. There was no Palestinian state. In 1947, under the UN, there was a partition plan proposed where Jews would have a state here and Arabs would have a state here. Jews accepted it. Arabs said, no, we will take all of it. The Jews declared their own state, called it Israel. Palestinians said, no, we don't accept this. So declared, they declared war in Israel together with five Arab states with the plan of removing all of it and turning all of it into an Arab country or into uh, an Arab land combined with uh, neighboring Arab lands. Israel won that war in which they were attacked. And you know what? If it was me, I would take all of it. If it was me and I was attacked and these opponents on all sides said, you are not going to have your own land. We are going to take yours and we will kick you out. We will take all of your land. I would say, oh, you know what? Now that I defeated you, I will take all of your land. It will all be mine and you will never get it back. Thanks. But <laughs> Israel won the war. Egypt occupied Gaza. Jordan occupied what is known as the West Bank. They kept this. Jordan never intended to create a separate state here. They just kept this as part of their own country, whereas Egypt established a little authority here and gave them a little bit of autonomous governing, but it was still part of Egypt. After the 1967 war, Israel took this back and took this back as well. And along that time somewhere they even took the sinai peninsula but later through peace israel finally gave that back and decided to work toward normalization with egypt which was against israel's existence they didn't have to do that they worked toward normalization with egypt said egypt recognize us we recognize you. Let's find peace. And by the way, take this land and govern it. We don't want it. And Egypt didn't want it. And they wanted to give Jordan this land and said, Jordan, govern this. Make it a free country. Jordan said, nope, we don't want it anymore. So Israel decided, all right, whatever. Then we will just make this um, a separate state and make this a separate state. This will be the, ter the Palestinian territories, and we will give Palestinians the chance to govern by themselves. And the outcome of that is terrorism, decades of terrorism. That's it. This was the most dumbed down, dumbest explanation of things that ever happened. But yes, uh, that's about what happened. That, that's about what happened. That's about what happened in this land that everybody's talking about right now. Um, I know lots of people said, uh, don't forget Black September in 1970. I don't know about the details of the conflict that specifically. Um, so I would have to, I would have to read up on that and then explain that separately. I don't remember anything about it. I know that Jordan was a major Palestinians have rejected every peace offer. Yeah, I mean, even Yasser Arafat. Yasser Arafat was the only hope, I guess, for for the world to, you know, for a peaceful Palestinian leader who would make peace with Israel and who would establish an, an Israeli, uh, um, would establish a Palestinian state and recognize Israel. Yasser Arafat was the only hope. And it looked like he was really on, on a path to make peace, to come to a solution. But just when... Everybody thought that he's going to make an agreement and that he's going to, you know, uh, finally bring an end to this conflict. Yasser Arafat walked out of the peace process and ended it abruptly because he didn't get everything he wanted, because he didn't get uh, Israel's agreement for a, a right to return for the Palestinians, including. Uh, the right to return for the Palestinians 
into Israel and to take possession of the lands they uh, half a century ago lived in. Why in the hell would, would Israel accept this? I wouldn't accept it. It's a security issue. Why would you, like, after the 1948 war, hundreds and thousands of Arabs left. Many of them left with the intention of coming back later after the war is over. And many of them left knowing that uh, the Arabs are going to attack Israel, so we should leave, we should get out of here. And then once the land is all ours, we will, of course, come back. And many others were expelled by Israel, were removed directly for, by Israel, pushed out. And there has been this endless uh, discussion, this endless uh, struggle to get them back to their homes, for hundreds of thousands of, uh, of Arabs to get back into Israel and to live there, to take possession of their uh, of, of what was once their place, to live, of what was once their home. Israel doesn't want that. Israel doesn't want to take these people back. Why would you want to, to take the people back who were complicit in one way or another in a plan to remove you entirely? Why would you do that? How is that a good idea? Who in the world would do that? Okay, let's, let's see. BGC, Vetan said, apostate Akbar. I agree completely. I agree completely, completely. We're proud of that. Uh, Mr. Crane said, keep up the good work, AP. Thank you. I appreciate it. I will. I will keep it up. Offer has made a super sticker, which I cannot see right now, but I bet it was a very nice one. I'll probably see it in a little bit. Zagros, thank you. Hey, Zagros, what's up? Said, AP, important question. How are you? <laughs> good, 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 good. Thank you. I'm good. Lucid said, my favorite quote of MHY is the Quran is a drug. When I'm live, okay, Mosab Hassan Yusuf, yeah, okay, my brain didn't work for a second. <laughs> okay, that's a good quote. Zaid al Hindu said, Mosab, Mosab, it's Mosab, not Mossad. Mosab Hassan Yusuf admitted in his interview that Hamas tortured the Palestinians in Israeli jails in full view of the Israelis. So, yes, he did, actually. Israelis were aware of it. And Hamas tortured people. He, he admitted, he, he also says it in his book, by the way. He says that, um, he says that the Israeli, um, the personnel in prison, they were aware that Hamas is a gang and that Hamas mistreats its own members. And Hamas tortures people and gets information out of them. And that the Israeli uh, security guards didn't do anything about it. So, what do you expect them to do exactly? <laughs> Imagine, you are, you are in prison. Hamas is this huge gang among all the, uh, the, the, the Arabs in prison. Hamas is the gang that has the power. They are in charge. They oppress anyone who comes in. They even, they are Islamists in such a sense uh, where... Um, especially back in the day, the Arab Arabs in, in prison, in Israeli prisons, who are there for political reasons, um, were of different backgrounds. Many of them were Hamas Islamists, but many, many others were secular. Some were atheists, some were communists, like the PFLP or DFLP or PLO. These were uh, groups that have nothing to do with Islam. But Hamas is... Such an authority, they're Islamists, that they would uh, force everyone who is in prison with them to wake up in the morning for the morning prayer, even if they don't pray. Just, you have to wake up. Wake up now. It's time for the morning prayer. And to respect all of their, their morals, their, their Islamic laws. To not even, like when they, if they have a TV in there, to cover up the TV if there is a, if there is a woman with her, uh, with her head uncovered and stuff like that. They just insane idiotic islamists in prison and they would also violently subjugate anyone else why in the world would israeli authorities in prison intervene and somehow try to stop this they wouldn't do that that's, that's not a good idea you generally don't want to do that if there is a big gang in prison you don't want to interfere and don't want to take their power away it doesn't work Prometheus said, would you agree that it is more informative to listen to a credible and authoritative speaker such as Mossab rather than some propagandist conspiracy theorist interviewed by Piers Morgan? Yes. Which conspiracy theorists are you talking about? 
um, you mean Hassan Paika, or do you mean the Palestinian ambassador? Or I don't know, do you mean Chunk Uyghur? I should probably listen to one of these guys, maybe, just to have some fun, just to see the contrast. BGC Vetan said a water canal in, uh, like Suez at the southwest border. What is this in reference to? Do you want to use it as a border? Huh. That's a funny idea. Uh, I don't think that works. You are so. I will. I will pitch that idea to my Israeli handlers, to my Israeli boss, um, for whom I make these videos, for whom I defend Israel all the time. I will. I will bring it up to them in, in our next meeting. Uh, your soul said, "You are my hero against Islam AP." Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm not a hero, but I can be. I can be a hero, baby. That was my favorite song when I was a child. <laughs> Tatiana said, watch the video with the blonde girl. Blonde girl. This one? Don't make another super jet. Just tell me, uh, do you mean this one? Or do you mean she's also blonde? Are there any other blondes? She's blonde. The other one is blonde. Michaela Peterson is blonde. Uh I bet you mean this one, probably. This one. Okay, you mean this one. Okay, I see. This one. Huh. I might. Although I kind of want to go for one of these dummies next just to see the contrast between the hero and these dummies. Um, but thank you, Tatiana. Unicorn1620 said, thanks again, AP as always. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you. Kiki said, why do Muslims control the Temple Mount in Israel? Because they can. Because they desire it. Because they want it. The original plan was for Jerusalem to be entirely controlled by an international entity. It would be neither in uh, Zionist nor in Arab control. But things changed bigly. Shah Nazran said, I appreciate the work that you do. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it very much as well. Um, okay. I'm going to watch another video here. I, I'm not sure if I can actually, uh, if I have the tolerance for it, but I'm going to try to watch another video. And I now have three choices in front of me. One is Hassan Piker, the complete dummy. One is Chunk Uyghur, the loud one who yells. And one of them is this blonde woman and this other woman. Which one should I watch? Let me know. Let me see. What, what does the chat say? Which one shall I watch? I should make. A, I should probably make a poll here. Let's see. I'm gonna make a poll. Which one should I watch? Hassan dummy, Jenk dummy, blonde woman. Okay. I started the poll. If this is important to you, please vote. Pick one, and I will watch the one. Next one. <laughs> Pick your poison, huh? Yes, yes. Just stream all day, all of them will keep sending super chats. I don't believe you. <laughs> I don't believe you. Uh, I can't even do that. Some, sometimes I think I should do that thing where I go live and um, and watch videos and comment on things for like eight hours like uh, like these big streamers do. But I don't know if I have the energy for that. I don't know if I have the, the strength of 30 men like Muhammad, like Prophet Muhammad. Uh, justified observation made a super chat. And thank you so much. I appreciate it. 55% well, says a blonde woman just because it's a woman. right? Um, nobody wants Jenk. Nobody wants to see Jenk. I understand. I don't want to see Jenk. <laughs> like, I probably find Hassan significantly worse in his takes than Jenk, but even I want to see rather Hassan than Jenk. This guy's just annoying. Like just just to give you a little taste of it, watch his fake anger. Like, How a ground invasion by 
the show today. Um, why are you so frustrated? Yeah. Well, honestly, I, I didn't expect the framing that you put on this segment, and it's uh, framing like that. That's disgusting. So I don't see what this has anything to do with anti-Semitism. I, I formed Young Turks in TYT with two Jewish friends who are some of my friends. Yeah, sorry, who had, I think what Hamas uh, but do I see you guys crying for Palestinians? I mean, Chris Christie was just, I think many of the real bigotry here, no big deal because what, Palestinian lives don't matter? I think the real bigotry here is saying that Palestinians, we can kill three times as many of them already. And this is the appetizer. Netanyahu and his barbaric government have not even started the entree of murder and death and mayhem they're about to do. And that's somehow okay, killing three times as many Palestinian civilians, let alone the occupation, which is bigotry by definition. This is such a such a horrible speech. I mean, ah, this is this is cringeworthy. It is this uh, standard tabloid. I don't know. Like you wake up in the morning, you see people talk some cringy garbage. But this is bigotry. This is, this is, this is, uh, it's just a bunch of buzzwords with nothing behind. Okay, thank you, thank you. Thank you for not adding anything to the conversation at all. We say that everyone in the world can uh, defend themselves, can have their own state, can have sovereignty, except the Palestinians. And the reasoning behind that is the Palestinians are what? Uh, they're what? The idea is that they are savages and that Muslims are too violent and cannot control themselves, so they must be- Said nobody ever. Occupied for 56 brutal, disgusting years. This, so is, this is so, ah, God, this, this makes me cringe. It's like the anger here, the anger expressed is not even genuine on any level. It's like, I am so angry right now. <clears throat> I know. It's disgusting. It's bigotry. It's so angry. Look how angry I am. It's like he practiced at home. He, he thought to himself, um, I'm going to be there. I'm going to go there and I'll be very angry and I'll say, I can't take this anymore. But then he arrives there and he's not actually that angry anymore. He's now in the he's now there in the studio. He's not angry anymore. Not at all. But he thinks, OK, 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 OK. Remember, remember, I'm going to be angry, I'm going to be angry. I'm not angry right now because I'm having a fantastic morning, but remember to be angry. <clears throat> yeah, I'm I'm so angry. <clears throat> That's basically what's happening here. Just so nah. Nah. Get out of here, man. I've had enough of the bigotry against Muslims. <laughs> Shut up, man. Shut up. He even says at some point, uh <laughs> wait. Bombs kill people or something like that. What was that? What was that? Let me see. Bombs. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Look at this. I'm never going to watch this whole Rubble after Israel or any government drops a bomb on them. And I need the West to understand something. Bombs kill people. <gasps> and do you know how they kill people? Did you know this? Did you guys know this? Wow. End the war right now. End the war right now. End it right now. Who, I, I didn't know that bombs actually kill people. Wow, that's what's going So that's, what, that's why people are outraged, because bombs kill people? End the war right now. Truce right now. <laughs> Jeez. Uh... <laughs> Okay, 54% said blonde woman. All right, I'm going to watch the blonde woman. Uh, <laughs> My pack now. Um, I refuse to talk to genocide deniers. That's the title of the video. Not, not you, get out of here. That you can see. And not you either. You get out of here. Hassan, you seem like a nice guy. I would like to have a conversation with you one day about something that is completely stupid. Yeah. Now let's watch this interview here. Recommended by Tatiana and others and uh, approved by half of the voters here. 
Okay. Let's see. Wait, bombs kill people. I know. This is disgusting, right? You shouldn't make a super chat to me right now. You should donate $10 to ask for an end of the conflict because we just found out that bombs kill people. Yeah. Bombs kill people. I didn't know that. I'm going to change my whole stance on this whole issue. Founder of Within Our Lifetime, Nadine Kiswani, and the broadcaster and journalist Emily Austin. Okay, Emily, what did you make of that exchange I just had with Loki? I just dislike how you ask a clear, clear cut question, mm. and the question never seems to be addressed on any of your interviews, quite frankly. It seems like they use the airtime as an opportunity to deny the question and just spread their own narrative, and it just, it's, it's, Pointless. Yes. The debate is pointless. It's it's a one-sided. Wait, who is this? I never heard of this. Emily Austin, broadcaster. I don't know who Emily Austin is. I've never heard of Emily Austin. Who's Emily Austin? But yes, that's precisely that's true. I said the very same thing. Others said the very same thing. There is one question that Piers Morgan asks. So, what do you think is the proper response? And they're like, oh, well, people shouldn't be killed. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Nobody ever thought about this before. People shouldn't die. Thank you so much. Thanks for adding that to this conversation. We had no idea. Spread their own narrative, and it just it's it's pointless. The debate is pointless. It's it's a one-sided conversation, and there's no actual conversation. It's here's my question. Oh, but what about this pin? Right. I mean, Nadine, my problem with it was I, I've interviewed some pro-Palestinian voices. Emily's right-wing Zionist. Oh no, I can't watch right-wing Zionist. I have to turn this off. Sorry. Last few weeks, who were emphatic immediately. Let me make it clear: what happened on October the seventh was a disgusting terrorist attack, an abomination. And then they go on to talk about the plight of the Palestinian people and maybe the historical conflict and so on. And I have great respect for people that do that. I've got to say, I really struggle with anyone who just cannot have the humanity to start by saying what happened on October the seventh was appalling, an outrage. Do you feel it was? I think Palestinians are tired of that being the starting point constantly when right now- Shut up, yes or no? There are 6,000 Palestinians who have been killed in Gaza, over 2,500 of them children, 33 mosques leveled- Jeez, this is, this is infuriating. Hospitals leveled, so we're tired of that being the, the main goal of the conversation. It's not the main goal. Part of it. It's the starting but point of this war. Starting... Yeah, but hang on. It's the starting So a bunch of people go and murder a bunch of people. As a result of that, chaos ensues, and a bunch of people on the side of those who killed a bunch of people die. And then we suddenly focus on those deaths that came in retaliation as a response. And then suddenly all questioning about what initially kicked it off is should not be talked about. Like it's, it's like, no, 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 let's not talk about that. Let's not talk about that. Let's talk about Israel's oppression of these people. Why? Why can't you just say a few words here? Point of this war. Outside it's of not the main goal of what I want the conversation to be. The starting point was when 750,000 Palestinians were ethnically cleansed, were expelled from their homeland. This is a lie, and this is already known historically that this is a lie. 700,000 Palestinians were not ethnically cleansed and forcibly removed. 700,000, the estimate is that initially 500,000 or so uh, were, were gone during the 1948 war. Lots of them left on their own accord by themselves. Many of them were expelled. That's it. And they were, and this happened, the Nakba, the chaos, as they call it, the catastrophe, it happened because of Arab aggression against Israel. It didn't happen because Israel decided, oh, you know what? These, these Arabs, I don't want these Arabs here. Let's kick them all out. That's not how it happened. Israel was attacked by those very Arabs, so they decided to uh, to to take land. And together with all of those who left by themselves, they expelled others whom they saw as complicit. That's what happened. Uh, during the Nakba, which my, grandparents, Nakba. which my grandparents mm. uh, fled Palestine because of the Nakba, because of the massacres and the rapes that they- Fled Palestine. Because of what? Who started the war? They heard. So to me, that's the starting point. That's my experience. Let's go with that for a minute. Let's start with the Nakba, because the only Nakba is the part that people forget please, to address. Please, please, 1948, please, please. after the partition please. plan, the Jewish state 
called in the Arabs to live prosperously and peacefully in the land. But what happened the very next day, not even 24 hours later, is the alleged Nakba, where the yes. Arab League declared war on the Jewish state. Yes. We just agreed to have our two-state solution. <laughs> and what did they tell their people? Leave the state. Let us get the land back. Let's ethnically cleanse the Jewish people. And once we defeat yes. them in this war, you will come back to the land. So the only Nakba was a catastrophe that you guys, yes. the Arab Leagues, waged a war that you could not win. And that is God why... Say- Thank Sorry, you. your grandparents Thank you. had to Let's leave their home. That's completely ahistorical. I don't represent the Arab League. I'm Palestinian, and I'm speaking on behalf of the Palestinians. But why do you find it hard? <laughs> <laughs> wow. End of discussion. At this point, this woman is completely dishonest and should just leave. You see what just happened, right? What's her name? Emily Austin. She said, well, thank you. What everyone needs to say here. You keep talking about this expulsion. You keep talking about the Nakba. So let's talk about why it happened and what actually happened. How about that? And she's like, oh, uh, no, I'm just talking for Palestinians. This is the dishonesty. This is the insane dishonesty. This is why none of these pro-Palestinian, pro-Hamas guests will answer any questions. This is why they will not respond to the questions that Piers Morgan asks them. Present the Arab League. I'm Palestinian, and I'm speaking on behalf of the Palestinians. But why do you find it hard to, to start, given this war, this latest war that's erupted, began with a terror attack on October the 7th, why is it hard to not just say, that was terrible? I don't see you asking Regev if he condemned the slaughter of innocent civilians. She can't do it, can you? No, she can't, because she's the same woman who said every Zionist before they die should hear pop, pop before they die. So she probably agrees with the massacre, so why would she condemn them? I think where the media is part of manufacturing consent. We're talking about you. Are you kidding me? And she didn't even bother responding to that. She didn't even bother making a clarification. She's just smirking under it. These are the same people. I mean, what's her name? What is her name? I, I've, I missed her name. What is her name? Jeez. This Emily Austin is killing it. And this woman is just a terrorist sympathizer. That's it. Nerdine Kaswani. Let's see. Um, the ADL has an article on her. Wow. Okay, I'm going to look at that in a, in a second. I'm speaking here, and I don't, I'm not interested in speaking to genocide deniers. The media is manufacturing consent for genocide against the Palestinians. Shut the hell up, man. Palestinian people, just like they did with the lie of the weapons of mass destruction that was used to justify the murder of over a million Iraqis. And there's been many lies that have been repeated all over the news, including on your show, where CNN had to rescind. And even you said in subsequent interviews about the 40 beheaded babies. I haven't seen a single shred of evidence. I have not seen a single shred of evidence about these accusations coming out. I was actually actually deliberately misquoted. You raised Interesting point there. Yes, he was. I wrote a very brief summary on this, but I'm, I'm while we're watching this, I'm looking at an article about her, which just uh, seems insane. She literally th- thinks Zionism, Zionists, Israel should be wiped off the face of the the earth, and then she's here talking about genocide. Are you kidding me, man? Like, what kind of world is this? And then you have people who actually support her. Or people like her. And then people are on her side. I bet, I tell you, most of the people who watch this and who think, yeah, she's speaking the truth, have no idea what's going on, have no idea what what went on so far. Or they sympathize with terrorists, with terrorism. I don't. I don't want to, uh, you know, generalize here, but that's what it looks like. I wrote something very brief here because this question keeps coming up, and I'm so sick of it. I'm so angry, just like Jink Uyghur. <clears throat> I'm so angry right now. Look at me, how angry I am. <laughs> um, I wrote this here: short explanation on the forty beheaded baby story. IDF never claimed forty babies were beheaded. 
Yes, IDF never claimed 40 babies were beheaded. Israeli officials never claimed 40 babies were beheaded. Zaka Rescue Organization never claimed 40 babies were beheaded. So the whole idea, so Israel started this propaganda of 40 beheaded babies just to dehumanize Palestinians, to dehumanize Hamas, but where's the evidence? Never happened. Israeli officials never made such a claim. The first mention came from an I-24 news reporter who said she was told by a commander that 40 babies were found dead. Some had their heads cut off. This is the first mention. The Israel Twitter account quoted a news report from the same reporter on 40 dead babies. An interview with a deputy commander was published where he said that Hamas cut off heads of children and women. And that guy, by the way, makes a very, very vague statement. He just says, um, he says... They are monsters. Uh, they are rough, but we will win. They cut off head of children, of women. That's what he says. Like He doesn't even say we found children or whatever. Later, the same reporter tweeted that 40 babies, children, were killed, according to soldiers on the ground. This contradicts her earlier statement. She probably got this all wrong and or twisted it, but not even the reporter mentioned 40 beheaded babies. So, so far, nobody ever said 40 babies were beheaded. Zaka senior official confirmed seeing beheaded children and babies. This is the rescue organization. They confirmed seeing beheaded children and babies. There is no number. Netanyahu's office published photos from Zaka of dead and burned babies. And by the way, when you go on that tweet where they published it, you will see people say, oh, so where's the evidence for 40 uh, decapitated babies? A claim which nobody ever made. Somewhere along the way, the claim that Israel propagated 40 beheaded babies spread across social media, but nobody ever made such a claim to begin with. We know babies were killed, and we have photos of babies and children burned. We know that civilians were killed in brutal ways. The whole, but where are the 40 beheaded babies meme is simply an attempt to dismiss and downplay the crimes committed by Hamas. It is rather disgusting. This is the essence of it. Nobody ever said we have confirmed 40 babies were beheaded. So when they say, so where are the 40 beheaded babies? Where is the proof? They're asking for something that they themselves made up. Nobody ever made such a claim. About this issue of the beheaded babies from the October 7th terrorist attack. I was accused by uh, Bassem Youssef of saying on air that 40 babies had been beheaded. I never said that. I said there were reports that 40 babies had been killed and that some had been beheaded. That appears to have been borne out by uh, other reporting, but I haven't seen the full details of every single casualty, so I don't know for sure. I certainly never said 40 babies were beheaded, but that clip has gone around the world and I've been bombarded with abuse based on an absolute lie. I don't and what see makes a big difference between saying 40 babies were beheaded versus maybe, uh, you know, 40 some, were some. You don't think it was between 40 and some? You don't see because a difference. Because at the same, that's that's we, the we lie know, that's being used know, to kill 6,000 Palestinians in Gaza right well, okay, now. Okay, well, let me ask Emily. All right, let me ask Emily what this question. Okay, I don't see a difference between saying um, between saying you are uh, a terrorist and saying you might be a terrorist. Sorry, that's how it is. That's how it works. That's what we do now. But when you say decapitated 40 babies, you are planting a certain image. Well, who has said a certain that? Trigger in people's mind. Watch this. Who has huh? said that? Who has said 40 Who has said that? Who, who has said, said that? 40 decapitated? Who has said you that? Have, you have repeat. No, no, I haven't. What? I've never said that. You haven't said on your show 40 decapitated no. babies? I choked up. Uh... So Muslims post this. They say he lied here because he obviously did say it choked up earlier reading this new revelation about 40 babies being killed oh my god and some of them yeah. being beheaded and i was like how how can any human being so they say look he lies here He's, he never said 40 babies were beheaded but here is the proof that he actually did say it choked up earlier reading this new revelation about 40 babies being killed oh my god and some of them yeah. being beheaded and i was like how and he doesn't actually say in their piece of evidence that 40 babies were beheaded. What he says is that he just received this revelation, not like Muhammad's revelations, but this report that 40 babies had been killed. So he's reporting something that he heard from the report, 
The report says 40 babies had been killed, some of them beheaded. He never says 40 babies were beheaded. He never even says 40 babies were killed. He says it was reported that 40 babies were killed, some of them beheaded. But since since the other side likes to talk about these details so much, they're like, okay, where are the 40 beheaded babies? How many are there? How many babies were killed? How many of them were beheaded? Show us the heads, show us the bodies, show us how it was done. 39, not enough. To show me 40 of them. Question. I've asked uh, Nadine, can she say she was horrified by what happened? Well, on she wasn't. And, and she, had, she will not say that, which I think is very disappointing. Would you, in return, when you look at what's been happening in Gaza in the last two weeks, do you find that appalling, that the loss of young lives, of babies, of children, of women, innocent people who had nothing to do with the terror attacks? Absolutely, 100%. Any death of innocent civilians should be condemned privately and publicly, and I cannot believe I have to say that. So, yes, every children that is being collateral damage, every woman that's becoming collateral damage, my heart aches for them. Why, However, why, can't, why can't you do that? I think we all agree that the loss of innocent life is sad, but I believe that the loss of innocent life wouldn't be an issue. It's okay when Israel it's didn't ethnically cleanse Palestine. To they can't say it. You heard it from so many people, right? You heard, you heard it from so many people say, yes, my heart aches. Yes, it shouldn't happen. Yes, it is sad. It makes me sad. People shouldn't die. Civilians shouldn't die. Men, women, children shouldn't die. This shouldn't be happening. And this is the fault of Hamas. This is what started it. But no, when you confront this other side, you, it, it immediately has to come to no, 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 no. Uh. To begin with, in 1948, well, they did, and that's that the is the source yeah, of this. I, to me, I go to the source of the yes. issue. But what that doesn't happen on October but that 7th isn't the beginning no. of the, of what Palestine had you asked me have okay Benedine, ask this me. is so funny uh, she, Emily Austin she just brought up the actual beginning of the issue and she just asked the question she just since she wants to talk about the beginning of this the other co-guest Emily Austin she just asked about 1948 how did it start why did this why did these people leave she didn't re refuse to engage with that she refused to engage with that question because she knows she'll be buried once she gets into that. And now she wants to go to the back of the to the beginning of the conflict again. But that what doesn't happen on October that 7th doesn't, isn't the beginning no, of of what Palestine had you asked me, have Okay, Benadine, ask me. That's what, not the starting point. Why don't you ask me what do I think of that? You have a lot of preconceived views of what you think I think. I agree with you. I think the displacement of hundreds of thousands of Palestinians in 1948 is the root cause of all of this. Well, you can thank the Arab Leagues for declaring war on the there are, solution. There are myriad people at fault in the next 70 years. We were ethnically years. cleansed from our land. Why? It's not like Jewish people were ethnically Why? cleansed from the land of Palestine. The they Catholic? colonized it from other why? I'm my... actually discussing with him. I refuse to speak to Can genocide he... denier. Well, that, that... I refuse to speak to genocide denier. He's not a genocide denier. <laughs> okay, then you are the genocide denier. She's not. Do you know the definition she of just a genocide? Is. No, I do know the definition of what a genocide. Gaza currently is a concentration camp. No, it is Because not. the Palestinians Do you think Hamas being... wages genocide? I believe that. Look at the numbers. Look at the Palestinians who have Hamas, been killed. Hamas is stated We're not here to talk about any is to eradicate the people, the Jewish people. It's their stated purpose. The first thing that we should be that's fighting for—that's literally is for genocide. Palestine. She is so dishonest and disgusting. This makes me sick. She just—you can't talk to people like this. She refuses to engage with anything that will be contrary to her agenda here. Palestinians to be returned yeah, home Nadine, to their homeland. That is and literally about the specific a massive stated entities. purpose is literally the de definition of genocide. It's wiping out people based the on their The hostages who were released had otherwise to say. Oh, the as two we've out of two hundred and fifty. Let's news. applaud Hamas. Let, you can't. Okay. The hostages who were released had otherwise to say other things to say. Um, there is an ongoing propaganda which I kind of want to make a video on, or focus on, or just just cover in a in a, in a stream or something like that, uh, where they say, "Oh, the, the 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 hostages released by Hamas, they say they were treated very very well, and it was actually Israel who did all the atrocities." Completely false. Completely false. They refer to, um, and they also say there is actually a lot of evidence now that. It was the IDF itself that killed a lot of uh, you know, Israeli civilians and all of that. Completely false.
they're referring to only two people who made statements and they are taken out of context. One of the women is, her name is, what's her name? Uh, Yasmin, Yasmin Porat or something like that. She was uh, freed, not from a long hostage situation. She was taken hostage and held inside Israel by these uh, Hamas terrorists. While she was there, she said, I wasn't treated badly. I was taken care of. I was treated humanely by this guy who was there. And then she clarifies, by humanely, I mean, I just had my needs taken care of, like water and food and stuff like that. She wasn't actually taken to Gaza, this woman. She was just there. And the guy taking care of her, the Hamas terrorist, he was not really sure what he's doing. He eventually uh, surrendered to the Israeli police. But while he was surrendering, the same guy who was very nice to her all the time took her as human shield to surrender, to save his own life if something goes wrong. So she points that out as well. Of course, the, 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 the Hamas sympathizers leave that out completely. They completely leave that out. And she says that lots of the people taken hostage died and there was heavy shooting. And when she's asked, uh, so could it be that they died in crossfire and that even our IDF might have uh, you know, killed some of them? She says, possibly. Yeah, because there was very heavy crossfire. Nobody knew what's going on. And it was just uh, terrorists and the IDF shooting back and forth. So necessarily, somebody died by accident. That's what she says. Nobody ever, ever said the IDF killed their own people. But they go out and uh, spread this dumb propaganda. And then we have the old woman who said that she was taken care of. But what they again leave out is she says on the way of... Uh, being taken to Gaza, she was uh, put on the back of a motorbike and she was beaten with sticks and it was hell. I went through hell, she says. They leave that out completely again. They don't care about facts, just like this woman. She doesn't care about facts either. Okay. The hostages the that Israel didn't even want to take to begin with. They didn't even want to take them to back. This is also a lie. No such thing ever happened. Take them. The Palestinians need to divorce as they bomb as they bomb Hamas. Gaza Palestine as they bomb Gaza, risking their own be, hostages. I'm speaking. They don't care Palestine about killing that, that Needs been. to that be liberated been. from Hamas because when your governing governing body is a terrorist organization, that is the root of the problem. Not the, the root, alleged okay, ethnic well, cleansing. The ethnic cleansing of Palestine happened decades, decades before Hamas was even. Created. Let me ask you what a question. Exactly Let me ask you a question. Do you think that Hamas should stay? in power in Gaza. I'm not here to talk about- Oh my God, this is so infuriating. Political Shit. organizations. No, I don't care about these questions because my people are being ethnically cleansed. Because my I see the faces murdered. of- Anything that has to do with the, with the actual conflict, with the actual war, she's like, oh, I don't, I don't want to talk about that. But why are you here then? 2,500 Palestinian children yes. on social media yes. every day, charred, mutilated, mm -hmm. having chemical weapons against them. So this is going to be my priority on this show, just like any Palestinian around the world is speaking up for our you cause. Will have also, you will also stop using babies as human shields. Stop it's making the most densely populated region in the world. Yeah, but you will also know, 2.3 million Palestinians, Nadine, half of them are homeless. Let me respond to you. This is a ridiculous let me respond argument. To you. My question is whether you think it is good for the Palestinian people the Hamas stay in charge, given the scale of the terror attacks they carried out, given the inevitable response that's come from Israel, with the inevitable loss of Palestinian lives, given the displacement now of hundreds of thousands of Palestinians out of the north of Gaza into the south, and who knows what's going to happen, the devastation to Gaza and to Gazan people has been unbelievable and yet entirely predictable once Hamas decided to carry out the terror attack on the scale they did. I simply ask you, do you, do you think that's a good thing for Is Palestine? Is it not predictable that there will continue to be resistance to a... <sighs> Imagine having a conversation with this woman. 
oppression, as long as apartheid, occupation, ethnic cleansing, genocide continues to exist, whether Hamas exists or not is an irrelevant question. Because as long as oppression against the Palesti Palestinian people how can exists, you end, we will continue How can you end that oppression, as you see it? And many would agree with you. Why don't we address the oppression first? She called Israel an apartheid mm. state. So I'd like to just define what apartheid is. It is segregation, like what South Africa is facing. But the alleged apartheid is because Israel set up security measures after the numerous uh, bus bombings in 2000 and set up checkpoints, which they got very insulted by. But it's the same way that airports now require security after 9-11, reasonably so. So it is taking security precautions. Secondly, we have three Arabs, and if I'm not mistaken, Muslims currently sitting in the Knesset. Does that sound like apartheid Let to me you? quote the they Israeli defense Israeli minister Arab and how they right. view Palestinians. He said that we are... Oh, Gara, great. She doesn't engage with a single thing that is made. She doesn't engage with a single point that is made. This whole idea, oh, she's a genocide denier. She wants blood. That's why I will not talk to her. And then she's the one who clearly appears here to be um, to be completely careless, callous, to be horrible. This is basically how Hamas acts. Next, she will bomb this whole place and say, well, you had it coming. I'm not, I'm not saying this is what she will actually do, so don't. <laughs> fighting against human animals that our soldiers will not be accountable for anything there will be no fuel yes no human animals they were talking about hamas we are no, fighting human animals how is that a wrong thing to say they love doing these things they love taking that out of context and saying oh this was about they, they, they meant all palestinians they meant all arabs by that they actually meant all muslims by that no they actually meant all non-jews by that no they're talking about a war they're talking about going to war with Hamas. And the guy says, we are fighting human animals. And there is nothing wrong with that. Yes. Yes, it's right. No food, no water, and Gaza will cease to exist. This is what Yoav Gallant, the Israeli defense minister, has said. This is how they refer to Yeah, I think one of the big problems, I think, this has is been, beyond apartheid. I think one of the big problems leading up to this has been... That's not apartheid. That's well, beyond let me just apartheid. say what I think. That's the language of let ethnic say, and genocide. Let beyond me just, apartheid. Let me, let me quickly have a look at this here. I got... I had this linked. Free, free Palestine! River to the sea! Where is that part where she says that? Apparently, there's a quote in here. Free Palestine! Free! Free Palestine! Free! Free! Free Palestine! Well, I need a clap. So it's gonna be. Okay, apparently here somewhere she says something like uh she says that quote, I hope pop pop is the last noise that some Zionists hear in their lifetime. I mean, just have a look at this, man. This is just <laughs> a whole profile on her things she said. It says here, infamous quotes, I hope that pop-up is the last noise that some Zionists hear in, her, in their lifetime. Abolishing Israel is the key to peace. Israel must be annihilated. So why, why is it okay for her to say these things, but then it's, it's somehow wrong to say, we should, to say we should take control of Gaza? If somebody said we should get rid of Gaza, why would that be a problem? Why should that be a problem? The Palestinian community and the Palestinian and the people who stand with and support Palestine are 100 percent behind our martyrs. We are 100 percent behind our resistance. We know that our liberation will only come through resistance by any means necessary. Facing genocide, resisting. We need allies that are going to help us achieve a victory, not allies that are going to tell us to be nonviolent. <laughs> Israel must be annihilated. Yeah, what a wonderful person. What a wonderful person. What a nice person.
I made the point I want to make, which is I think one of the problems leading up to this is that Benjamin Netanyahu, for political expediency to remain in power, has packed his cabinet with a bunch of right-wing headbangers whose rhetoric actually was incredibly incendiary and incredibly unhelpful. So I do think that. Actually. And you're, you know what? Even if you're right, unfortunately, the the narrative that it's about the land. I'm sorry, the Hebron massacres in 1927, 1929. That was not about Israel. It is about the murder of Jews all over the world. National Jihad Day that I had to worry about being in Manhattan last Friday was not about. You mean Israel. the day where we it had a protest where Hamas thousands of New Yorkers? Well, I thought she's not. I thought she doesn't talk to genocide deniers. Now, why, why does she say you mean? This is just very unprofessional. Came out. That's not a Hamas national day of jihad. You're talking about a national day of jihad. She's afraid right. for her life. Who was killed in America? What? Who was killed? A six-year-old Palestinian boy and a was killed in Chicago. Week, you want to was stabbed numbers? 26 that was times. Appalling. It was appalling. 26 was appalling. times. Yeah, but, Nadine, you're talking about being afraid Nadine, for your life. I can I'm say, constantly afraid yes, for Yes, that's horrible. That's horrible. And nobody says that's justified. That's horrible. That's the entire point here. She doesn't want to say the same thing. My life I can say, I can say to those examples you just gave, media. they are appalling, appalling. But I also find it very dispiriting that you can't just take a moment to say what happened to the people in Israel on October the 7th was also appalling. But it came out of her mouth. She wants the Zionists dead, so how is she supposed to condemn it? It would not have happened had Israel not initiated. Wow, man. This is a terrorist representative here. And that's it. This is... This is a terrorist sympathizer. This is a spokesperson for terrorism. I, look at that. She doesn't even. She doesn't even attempt to even correct that or anything. She's supposed to condemn it, but it came out of her mouth. She wants the Zionists dead. So how is she supposed to condemn it? It would not have. Then you see that smirk on her face, and she's like, she knows. There's nothing she can say about that. It's true. So she justifies it. Happen had Israel not initiated this, and you know this from the beginning. I think we always need Israel to go back did nothing to them. Yes, that warranted did. what happened on October the seventh. Nothing. Israel. Nothing. The scale of that terror attack is like saying that America brought 9/11 on itself. Is I remember people saying that. Oh God, Pierce, shut up! I I wish he let her talk and, and respond to that. In the streets after, and wants that was to go equally back in time and that was equally equally repellent to me. A terror attack is a terror attack is a terror attack. What that's the question that should be asked. God, he should have he should have really let her respond to that. I mean, you just push her on that. Do you think any? Do you think what Israel anything Israel did is justified? Uh, do you do you think that anything Israel did justifies Hamas acts on October seventh? Just a very clear question with a straight answer. Did that day was unconscionable. We have anyone no state, with an no ounce of humanity no army, has to say that. Anything that Palestinians do to defend themselves will always be categorized as a terrorist attack because this is the position that the world has put us right, in. I'm final not point responding to, to your questions. I, I have a question. When was the last questions. time? Pal You're sick. You're sick. What Hamas did on October 7th is uh, a series of terrorist attacks attacks where um, 1,400 people died so far at least. And we have video footage, abundant footage. We have evidence, a lot of it, that Hamas terrorists pour into Israel and shoot civilians. I played the videos. I don't want to play it again because it's sick. And to be honest, I don't want another video here <laughs> age restricted. But you can see them shooting into civilian vehicles directly at families, setting cars on fire, burning homes down, shooting into homes, attacking a village, nothing to do with the military. We have evidence of Babies killed, babies murdered. We now have babies beheaded, actually. Children burned, children killed. Families, men, women, elderly, everything. Elderly, men, women, children, babies abducted, taken as hostage. Evidence of rape. Everything possible, of torture. They even killed animals. We have all of it. And to her... This is self-defense, 
self-defense. It's justified. Palestine had full sovereignty over the land. Give me a date or... This makes me want to also do some self-defense. <laughs> Even a year that Palestine had their own... I'm not going to engage with genocide. Can can I, which, of course, I mean, like, you know, verbally defending myself. Yeah, of course. Want to make a point? You can for me, say that. She wants to be a child. So, when was the last question. time... This is the position that the world has put us in. Right, I'm not point responding to, to your questions. I, I have a question. When was the last questions. time Palestine had full sovereignty over the land? Give me a date or even a year that Palestine had their own I'm government. not going to engage your with genocide denial. If you want to make a point, you can for me say that. She wants to be a child. How are you an attorney? God. Can you ask her when did Palestine have full sovereignty over the land? When did I'm not Palestine here to talk have full about sovereignty? When did full sovereignty? Oh, and I see the that you're taking your talking points from her. Well, you don't want to talk to me. It's a question. You have to answer it. Do you want to answer me? And stop being a child. Such a child. Such a child and terrorist. Child, if you have a Jew in court, are you not going to represent them as an attorney? This has nothing to do with oh, Jewish okay. people. No, it does. We actually have Jewish people so. protesting you're on the streets Hamas. of New York City. Yeah, but hang on. In defense of Palestine. The okay, let's people. not all shout over each other, but it has everything to do with Jewish people when Hamas's stated intent is to wipe Jewish people off the face of I'm the earth. I'm not the spokesperson of Hamas. No, but I don't you should be able to say that's wrong. This that. conversation, oh that's all you're talking because about. You're no, them. I'm here to flip the narrative and make sure you that know people why know we're that all this sitting government here? is funding Israel to the tune of $10 million a day, $3 right. million a year, and they're asking for an additional $14 billion in aid. Okay. The bombs that are being manufactured by U.S. companies are what's being dropped on Gaza. The world is watching a genocide okay. happening and is not doing anything Biden about it. So the most important thing for me okay. to do I'm actually glad that this one came on here because lots of people who are on the fence might watch this and feel really appalled, feel really disgusted by by her and what she represents. And I think that this will set the record straight for quite a few people here. It's it's quite clear. She's <laughs> she defends the terrorism, she defends the terrorists. She very clearly, dishonestly refuses to engage with uh, the clear, very clear idea that Hamas wants to eradicate Jews and so on. Thank you, Nerdine Kaswani, you terrorist sympathizing, horrible, dumb, big baby monster for making that clear to everyone again. Right to... now, it's to stop this genocide. Okay. And questions question. about Hamas are not going to do that. Okay. It's condemning. It's questions the... about the very side that actually uh, is currently at war with Israel officially. That is the main fighting side. Will not bring any solution to this. Yeah, great. Fantastic point. Wow. The side of the Palestinian Palestine. people and condemning the UK Nadine. and US government Nadine. that we live under, that I pay taxes to, Nadine. that are killing Palestinian people every day. And the UN Nadine. already said that Gaza would be unlivable by 2020. Mm -hmm. The UN had already said uh, that most of the that, that most of the hospitals um, in Gaza, at least two thirds of the healthcare facilities, um, are not being able to provide. Today, yeah. yeah, are not able to. I to think function. it's wrong. So it's I think not it's just wrong the today. airstrikes and the missiles that are going to kill uh, people. The siege and blockade has been killing people you should and be able to people you should be able to say that that is all wrong which i believe it is wrong and you should also be able to say that what happened on october the 7th was wrong a if human a wrong, human being who cares equally about the lives of all human beings would be able to say that they, i do both care about the lives of all human beings equally and that's why exactly i believe okay. that in order to preserve human life you must end the siege on gaza okay. you must end the blockade you the... must end the settler colonization of palestine this is a com this is complete bullshit it's it, everybody everybody knows everybody who has an, any idea about this knows that the blockade is in place to begin with because hamas refused to make peace that's it why in the world would Israel allow this state to just be there and freely flourish and you know maybe just open the borders let them all come in yeah they want they want us killed yeah they say they say no we will not stop until Israel is eradicated we will not stop until the Zionist entity is destroyed we will not stop until all of it belongs to us from the river to the sea and by the way yeah kill all the Jews that's what they say but hey you know let's just let them in and, you know, let them do whatever they want. <laughs> what could go wrong? What's going to happen?
Palestine. It's, it's a, it's Free a, Palestine from Hamas. It's a, passionate, it's a passionate debate, and I understand why emotions run high. I appreciate you both coming in. Thank you very much indeed. Come back. Let's continue the debate. We only get, you only get to peace in these things, I can promise you, by thrashing these things out. People that hate each other have to come together and they have to try and find places of compromise. Otherwise, you never get to peace. 70 years this has been going on. 70 years. You need That's justice it. to get peace. You we need justice and you need compromise and you government. need both sides to acknowledge when bad things happen, you can say that is unacceptable. On, on October the 7th, if any tiny part of you says that was not was that was acceptable or there's a reason for it, I can't have that. But thank you for coming in. I appreciate it. Thank you both very much indeed. There you have it. There you have it. She can't even say that uh, it is unacceptable. She can't even say that it was wrong. She can't even say any of that. She thinks it's justified. She thinks it's justified. She thinks... It's okay for Hamas to go and kill people and to rape and to abduct and torture and all of that. La 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 la. Let's look at this resistance movement here one, one more time. Here. <laughs> على تفسير الباصات أيدينا على العمليات الاستشهادية They want to bomb buses just to end uh, the oppression, you know. It's like uh, just for for self-defense. They want to blow themselves up for self-defense. خلص سبع مليون فلسطيني برا بكفيكو تسخين في عدب يهود في كل مكان You have Jews everywhere. We must attack every Jew on planet. We must slaughter and kill them with Allah's help. Only for self-defense, of course. We shall never, never, never recognize Israel. It is Palestine from the river to the sea. But, you know, it's just about self-defense. Just like if Israel just stopped the blockade, you know, if Israel just stopped the blockade, just let them do whatever they want. These people who say we should kill all the Jews and we will never recognize Israel, it all belongs to us, they would just become the most peaceful people on earth. It's clear. Destroy the Americans and their support. Count them one by one and kill them all without leaving a single one. This makes me just want to really uh, support the Palestinian cause and Hamas. Wow. So now I, I now sympathize with Hamas. Look at the people of Jerusalem. We want you to cut off the heads of the Jews with knives, he says. With your hand, cut their artery here. He even describes it. He calls on the people in Jerusalem to just kill Jews and cut off their heads. Of course, it's all for self-defense. It's all just because of the blockade. If, if Israel just lifted the blockade and let them all in, you know, they would become the most peaceful people ever. <laughs> From us here in Gaza, they will never get anything but gun fire. Barud and Nar. So you, somebody said the subtitles could say anything. They don't just say anything. They actually translate what he's saying. <laughs> Nar means fire. Barud means um, gunpowder. Gun. Yeah. <laughs> They will never get anything but death and killing. Maut will qatl means death and killing. So, yeah. But hey, uh, I don't want you to get this wrong. Of course, Israel is the wrong, is in the wrong. It's all Israel's fault. And uh, if Israel just lifted the blockade and just, you know, let Hamas kill whoever they want, then Hamas would become all peaceful, would become fantastic. Uh, 
Free Palestine, guys. <sighs> Free Palestine, guys. <sighs> Kevin James Johnson said, if Yasser Arafat is the only hope, you know you are screwed. Yeah, unless you are the terrorist. Uh, actually, then you are actually screwed. Human Kirk said, neither Mo Hijab, Hassan Piker, Basim, Jenk are Palestinian. Their only qualifications are Muslim. But remember, this has nothing to do with religion. Of course, of course, it has nothing to do with religion at all. Nothing, nothing with religion at all. What kind of Muslim are you? Yeah. Focus on Bible code said, thanks, AP. The maps you showed were very helpful. Bible predicted trouble. Ishmael would cause seed. Genesis 16, Yeshua is the Prince of Peace. I don't believe in that aspect of it, but if that is how you want to interpret it, go ahead. Justified observations said, could you perhaps review Slavoj Žižek statement on Hamas in Palestine one of these days? No. <laughs> I don't want to be rude, but I don't know. I just don't want to listen to that guy. <laughs> I find it very hard to listen to. I, I think I never listened to him speak for longer than a few seconds. Slavoj Žižek. I don't want to mock his 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 lisp and all of that, so I, I don't know how to imitate him without mocking his lisp. But uh, no, I don't, I don't want to listen to him. <laughs> really, I don't. <laughs> uh, I just I don't think that there's anything worth listening to, to be honest. <laughs> uh, Rudney made a super chat. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Uh, Zohar Donenher said, "Thank you, thank you. No, thank you." Thank you. Leon said, I prefer Crowder's Jenk impressions. <laughs> I'm sick of this bigotry, this hate, just hate Muslims. This is so wrong. It makes me so mad. Uh, you talk to you talking to Hassan would make for a great show. I don't know about that, but I think it would be hilarious. It would be funny. It would be cool. Living with Jay said, Muhammad used to entice his soldiers to war by saying, let's get the blondie girls. So blonde girl it is. That's a good argument. I now see why, why everyone picks uh, that interview. But hey, Tatiana and everyone else who suggested it, great choice. Definitely much more important to watch than Hassan or Chunk Uyghur. Said Dave, said once Palestine is formed, we will finally have a country safe for women, ex-Muslims, LGBT people. I can't wait for a pride rally in Gaza. Uh, th that's the thing, right? Uh, like people want to guilt you into being, um, into sympathizing for, you know, with the Palestinian cause, sympathizing with Hamas and all of that. And I'm just sitting here thinking, okay, uh, more than half of those people there would want me killed. Most of the people there would want me killed. If not for apostasy, then for my opinions. And we have polls in which 60% uh, or more say apostasy, apostasy should be executed. And 90% think Sharia should be followed. Now, if, if people want my execution, if people want people like me dead, why in the world would I be stupid enough to believe that they are the good guys and they should, and I should support them in a conflict. And this is not even the reason why I don't support them. The reason is just the historical aspect of it. And I went through it so many times. But even if it was completely out of self-interest, right? If it was just about, um, you know, sympathizing with those that I consider just or whatever it is, rightful, why in the world would I sympathize with, why in the world would I, would I care about a free Palestine cause. I wouldn't. We have two states or two entities fighting each other. One of them is the Palestinian entity, or two Palestinian entities, actually. They can't even make peace among themselves. And one of them is the Israeli state. The Israeli state is a secular state, a secular government, where you have your human rights, as long as you don't uh, cause the trouble of wanting to end that, end that very state. In the other one, nobody is free. Which one do I support? Hmm, difficult question. Difficult question. I think I'll go for Hamas. 
Um, Unicorn said, always the Nakba. They never speak of the Shoah. They displaced over 850,000 Mizrahi Jews from across the Middle East and North Africa. They had over 3,000 year lineage in all those nations. Yeah. Lots of those people also left, left because they wanted to live in Israel rather than stay there and face persecution and discrimination again. Lots of others were intimidated or kicked out. Yeah. But let's talk about that. Let's talk about that instead. I can upgrade say they do not have any fear against lying because they think lying is required. That's that's the main tool here that they use. Lying is the thing. Death calls transmute minds into dysfunction. Yes. Hamas is a death cult, by the way. Bender, it seems like Moose, they got too comfortable and powerful in the West that they are admitting and imposing their BS. By the way, did you see the guy in London who told protesters about the age of Aisha, I didn't, I didn't see that. I haven't been following any uh, of the Islamic side of this whole thing. I've been consumed with the whole conflict um, for weeks, for two weeks now, or three, however long it was. I should check that out. If you have a link, give me the link. Post it here. I will look it up. I'll check it. Madre Selva said, thanks for standing for what is right. Thank you. Thank you for standing too. Not just me. Thank yourself. Claudia D said, AP, you are a rarity. A lot of these pro-Palestine people don't know history. Love what you do. We Christians are especially grateful. Love always. Thank you. I appreciate it very much. Thanks for your support. And yeah, I agree. They they either don't know or they deny. I mean, you have seen a very clear example here, right? With this, with this woman, with this Nardine Kaspani. She's just she just refuses to even talk about it. When, when asked the question, she doesn't even want to engage because she knows it will be very bad for her. It will be very bad. Welcome. I want to have a very brief look at this video here. Some people told me about this guy, this Palestinian rapper, Loki on Israel Hamas war. I don't want to watch the whole thing. I don't have the patience for that right now. <laughs> but he was kicked off or something. I don't know. Guess. So you're We're censoring to have eight me. At the end of the show, no, I would ask okay. you that I am able to read out the names of the 20 Palestinian journalists no, you that can't. have been I'm killed sorry. in I Gaza. Time so you're, I have two so, more guests. So you're We're censoring supposed to have eight me. So you're censoring me. Four left. 20 journalists. Have, so I'm being no, censored now. And I'll tell you something to, else. You're not being this censored. Badge, this You've badge, had more. this badge, All right. zoom in on this badge. This badge okay. was given All to right. me by an employee of this building who said they were told no. they could not wear this badge because it was the Palestinian flag. You talk about no. uncensored, this is censored. Nobody, this badge well, I was haven't told anybody from they an can, employee I, in this building. I have told because nobody they, they can with the or Palestinian can't wear people. a badge. So that's a ridiculous thing to say. I'm in New York. Uh, <laughs> but good to see you, Loki. I appreciate you coming on the program. <laughs> He said he's being censored because he can't read out those 20 names, but they're at the end of the show. It's funny. Uh, justify what happened that day. Piers, it didn't Piers, justify Piers, what you happened You know exactly what you're doing. And you should be able... The point, the no, point no. when that... Why is he stuttering? Why are you stuttering? Why are you stuttering, man? Don't stutter. I'm stuttering. You don't you, have anything to You're contesting... Say. Russell Brand, you There's don't no have a comparison Brand. between Russell Brand and what's happening It's the here. same thing. It's a rape allegation. Why are you, why are you stuttering? <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> so random, man. This guy, he thinks he's in speaker's corner wherever he goes. Oh, they're raped. Where's no. Russell Brand? Why do you that? It's well, do you think they were raped? No, I don't know. It's like the uh, Russell Brand thing. You said we don't know we didn't see the evidence. So why do you imply uh, uh, two I'm different standards? I'm okay, so it's reported. when it's Israel, we know they're raped. When no, it's Russell Brand, it's you been, don't know because you're No, it's been reported by legitimate news sources. When it's Israel, you I know believe, they're raped. But when it's I Russell Brand, you don't know. Them. When it's Russell Brand, you There's don't know they're raped. comparison between Russell Brand and what's happening It's the same thing. It's a rape allegation. Why are you stuttering? I'm not stuttering. This gets me every single time. <laughs> so ridiculous. <laughs> He's not even stuttering. I still don't understand. <laughs> oh boy. So random. <laughs> Brother, I have doubts. Lucid said, why do so many Arabs have this macho man attitude? Uh it is probably because of Israel. Because Israel because Israel oppresses Gaza and doesn't lift the blockade, that's why. 
John Collins is headed to the desert with the Palestinians. They are an anti-Semitic Jordanian squad. Or can't be exiled them all. All they deserve worse. Okay, that's, uh, that's, that's, I don't want to say those things. I'm, I'm not going to read this here alive. Joshua said, Wooden, Joshua Wooden said, Hey, Christians, let's not pressure AP so much with our kindness, gentleness, and love as the one who is the most influential in the world, being the Lord of the Kings and greatest figure of the last 2,000 years, Jesus Christ. Yeah. I feel very oppressed by uh, the kindness and gentleness and love and all of that. It makes me feel, I don't know, it could turn me into a terrorist. Anything could happen. I agree with that. Well, thank you, Joshua. Thank you for your for your consideration. <laughs> and thank you for your support. And thank you for being here. Uh, John Callis said someone put a pork chop in this harpy's mom. It's very mean, very, very mean. Amber Black said, does she think that yelling makes her look smart and not a raging bitch? That stands for bitch. I just don't want to, I don't want to spell it out. I don't want to say it. Uh, so yeah, I, apparently yes. Just like this guy, look at this guy. Well, no, Russell Brand, it's been, you know, your no, it's been reported by legitimate news sources. When it's Israel, you I know believe, they're raped. But when it's I Russell believe, Brand, you don't know. Them. When it's Russell Brand, you There's don't know. There's no comparison rape between Russell Brand and what's happening. It's the here. same thing. It's a rape allegation. Why are you? Why are you stuttering? <laughs> I'm not stuttering. <laughs> Stupid. Oh boy. Joshua Wooden said, we can assume he's fearing the feedback from his biggest group, similar to Jordan Peterson being the atheist community. We don't want to divide AP from the intellectually superior modern group of people that feared atheists. The feared atheists. Yes, that's, yes, probably. Very, very much. Yes, but thank you, and thank you. Sid Dave said, from river to the sea, Palestinians will... Yeah, I don't know what people mean when they say Palestine will be free. It already is free. It's called Israel, right? So what's, I don't know what they're, what they're talking about. Uh, Sid Dave said, how is Israel an apartheid state, but Muslim world is not? Like persecution of ex-Muslim, forced conversion of religious minorities. No, Muslims, whatever Muslims do, whatever Islamic countries do, is not... Apartheid is not oppression, okay? It's just. It's only if somebody else does something to Muslims, then it's then it's oppression, then it's unjust. Don't make me mad with these statements, please. <clears throat> when a Muslim says uh, that apostate should be executed, for example, that's not oppression. That's just a just statement. That's it. That's it. But when others say that uh, that Islam is wrong, that's oppression. Every Muslim is. Like when somebody says like something like this, this is, for example, not oppression. The Adam with a shock effect. Do you know your religion and Ali Dawa and Muhammad? Oh, really? Well, Adam is taking the mick out of you. This is a part of our religion. There's a reason to it. Yeah, there's a reason why there's a capital punishment because people like you, little weaklings, who leave their religion and cause uh corruption in the land by spreading it the capital punishment in islamic law would be applied to you we have no doubt and we're proud of that yeah not individuals going and doing it themselves like uh, idiots yeah no under an emir it is done yes and we you know what we'll be watching yeah we'll be watching because if you're going to cause corruption in the land that's going to cause more uh, damage to the society as a whole because the Sharia didn't come to protect an individual's right. Hey, can I drink alcohol? Yeah, sure. Drink alcohol, uh, run someone over, kill them, set the, uh, uh, all this kind of chaos. No, Islam says the right of the community is greater than you individual wanting your right to freedom, which is BS. Absolutely BS. Yeah? Don't get me started. So it just backfired on you. Let's see what Alhamdulillah. happens now. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So beautiful. So beautiful. And it's a shame, it's disgusting that the world won't allow Muslims to rule like this. This is true oppression. This is very true oppression. You see it right here. We're proud of that. Budgie Hoare said, uh, Hoare said, please watch Did Israel Steal Palestinian Land? Let me see. I already don't know the answer to that. It's no. Let's see, did Israel steal Palestinian? Who was who is that by? There are probably lots of such videos. Did Israel steal Palestinian land by Ayn Rand Institute? Really? You mean this one? You mean these? 
You mean 35 minutes? I can't do that now. I might do that some other time. But if you mean this, uh, I can put that on my list and watch it. But not right now. It's too long. It's too long, mate. But thank you. Um, BGC Vitan said, Arabs are allergic to democracy and egalitarianism. I wouldn't say that. It's very, very, very bad thing to say. Very bad thing. Repent. Sid Dave said, Muslims can't digest that someone did to them what they have been doing to others for 1,400 years. I support a Palestine, but only if it is a secular democracy and impossibility. Israel rocks. Palestine sucks. That's, yeah, 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 yeah. There's some truth to this. I would say, I just, I don't know. I, I don't think, look, any, 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 any tolerance in my head, any sense of um, believing the solution could be a two-state system, I feel like I, it's, it's gone over the last few weeks. I think it's, it's, it's gone. It's gone. Mm -hmm. doesn't work you see these people go out there and say and openly uh make make excuses for the massacre the rape of civilians it's gone joshua wouldn't said let's all tell ap he is our second favorite atheist behind i don't know like aaron Ra or some other atheist icon of ap is to drive ap to jealousy like god does with israel envy gentiles also ap you're going to debate again uh <laughs> yeah yeah I, I wonder who your favorite atheist would be if not me yeah probably matt delante richard dawkins aaron Ra, the best atheists the most loved atheists, the most respectful atheists. <laughs> uh, honestly, my personal favorite is as an atheist speaker and activist and whatever YouTuber, it would be, I, I would say I have a lot of respect for Alex O'Connor, Cosmic Skeptic. The guy is smart. Honestly, no sarcasm this time. Marta M said, new type of AP content unlocked, ASMR. Yeah, I can do ASMR if you type like such rude things. I could, I could whisper those. Uh, Lucid said, if you are called a post, then M hijab should be called mojab. Yeah, that's that's what I said. It should be mojab, but that's not very appropriate. You're sick. You're sick. Zagra said, hey AP, DM'd you two play worthy videos from my campus in Tempe. Also, would you review the Sam Harris and Eric Weinstein conversation on trigonometry? I could interview that, although. Let's see how long that is. I, I could I could review that, not interview that. Let's see. Trigonometry. Trigonometry. I like trigonometry. I love their channel. This is a two, I think this, we're, we're, this is a two hour conversation. Two hour conversation. Unless we can pick some highlights from here. Um, this would be very difficult. But if we can get some highlights. How are we supposed to think about the israel Palestine conflict? The mindset of Hamas. I'm actually curious about this part, the mindset of Hamas. Not today, or at least not now. This is much more than hatred. We are at war with jihadis. What should be done in response? This is a, probably an interesting part. How degraded is Israel? The spectrum of anti-Semitism. Why are Jews so successful? Are Eric and Sam hopeful? Interesting stuff. I might have a look at it. I might have a look at this and see. I usually don't listen to such long conversations. And I really respect both of these guys. They have very interesting things to say. But very long conversations that are too calm. <laughs> I would rather have some terrorist sympathizers scream and say, I don't talk to genocide sympathizers. By the way, kill all the Zionists, as we have just seen. Uh, if you have more of that stuff, let me, let me have a look at that. Uh, Kenny Demetter said, supporting your corruption of the land. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I want, I want to cause more corruption in the land by spreading apostasy, if I can make that happen. Thank you so much for anything that goes toward that. I appreciate it. Leon said, they act so tough, then cry when others are tougher. Cry when others are tougher. Which brings to my mind a video 
recently. Just, this is just, there's so much here. I, I don't even know it. There's this woman who was recently on a show this where month. she talked about the oppression of Palestinians and how Israel is inhuman and all that. Look at this. Like, this is the same woman who went on a TV show and discussed how people are Islamophobic and this is all prejudice and this and that. Here is how she reacted on October 7th to the terrorist attacks by Hamas against Israel. Nothing will ever be able to take back this moment moment of triumph this moment of resistance this moment of surprise this moment of humiliation on behalf of the zionist entity nothing ever this is how you react when on october 7th a bunch of rockets are fired and your terrorists pour in and kill and mutilate and torture and degrade and so on and then nothing will take this away nothing this is amazing Amazing. This is so good. So great. And once the response comes, you're like, why, why is the world not standing with us? We are the victims here. Asshole. Um, this guy makes me sick. This guy, Jackson Hinkle, he's behind uh, much of the propaganda, of the fake news that are spread by the pro-Hamas side. And this guy is doing all of this just for money. He is exploiting the current war and people's uh, feelings and all of that just to spread fake news, to post anything on his Twitter account, which will then be retweeted by a bunch of mindless morons. And he didn't tweet a single time about the Israel-Palestine conflict before October 7th. That's when he started. He made a few posts. It caught on. It was like so many people liked it and retwe retweeted it. And then he's, he has been tweeting nonstop about it and spreading the dumbest conspiracy theories just to get engagement and also asking people to subscribe uh, to get more of that stuff for only $3. You know, if all of those people subscribe, wow. Somebody who never cared about any of this is just using this right now to make money. And people are sharing it. And it's sick. And I don't care. But this guy just muds and destroys the whole conversation. Like any possible uh, reasonable conversation to be had is destroyed by people like these who are just in it for, uh, for themselves. It's horrible. He got community noted so many times over and over again. It's it's ridiculous. Um, what I actually wanted to look at is not this idiot. Uh, what I actually wanted to look at is that one guy, not this guy, who has some very sure, it becomes permissible for the husband in Islamic law to have marital relationships or consummate the relation with his bride. And this is the example of the prophet, peace be upon him. Do you know what precocious puberty is? Starting puberty unusually early. Like, yeah. Is there anything in Islam that prevents you from you know, a man marrying a five-year-old that started precocious puberty? You can arrange a marriage even as an infant, but that doesn't mean that sex is allowed. Could a man have a marriage to a five-year-old consummated if she started precocious puberty? If she starts showing signs of physical maturity, <laughs> then yes, that's permissible. As I said, age four? If there are signs Three. of, so this is something that becomes biologically impossible because I have to there are shows no, it goes as early as 11 months. Well, that's something that the parents would not, uh, the, see the thing about Islamic marriage is that parents are involved at these ages. And when you look at the- So this is the truth about Islam, always educate yourself before being um, Islamophobic and judgmental and saying bad stuff like, uh, you know, Islam promotes pedophilia and all of that. Pedophilia is taken in a negative sense, but you can see here that this guy says it's okay to have sex with a three-year-old if the parents allow it, or with a four-year-old if she has early puberty. So if it's okay, then obviously that's not a negative thing. So the negative undertone in saying pedophilia is then removed because it is Islamically justified. Always 
stop being Islamophobic and learn the truth from people like uh, Daniel Hikikichu. Alhamdulillah. Oh, uh, yeah. Pick a piece said, Apostate Prophet, you should appear on Pierce Morgan. Forget PBD. I should. I would. I shall. Maybe I should organize a mom like Muhammad Hijab does and ask everyone to say to Pierce Morgan, are you scared to invite AP on your channel? You know, he will humiliate you. Why, why don't you guys go and, uh, and, and, and mob people and say you are scared to invite a prostate prophet? He will destroy you at a debate. <laughs> why is nobody doing that for me? Um, <laughs> not sure if you've seen this this year. Hello. A phone conversation between a Hamas terrorist and his parents. Ah. He's happy and calls his parents because he just killed 10 Jews with his own hands. And they're like, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Allah, we're proud of you. Allah Akbar, Allah I killed so many Jews. We're proud of that. <laughs> they are so happy. They're crying now because they have to, because they're so proud that their son, their only son, is so so successful that he killed ten Jews with his own hands. They're so happy. He is the pride of the family now. But yeah, no, this is just because of the blockade and because, uh, you know, Israel uh, doesn't treat them very well. You know, if that was all lifted, then Hello. these guys would no, no longer say that, of course. But this is what you see. This is what you get here. You see these other people. You're sick. You're sick. I, just, you can just imagine, like, family gatherings. Uh, the parents of, these, of this guy probably, like, go to family gatherings and they're like, oh, you know, my son, I'm so proud of him. He just killed 10 Jews. Yeah, yeah. And the others are like, wow, mashallah. Wow. You must be so proud and so happy. Wow. Our child, he's going, he went to America and he's he's going to he's going to a university. He wants to become a lawyer. Disgusting. But your son, he killed 10 Jews. Wow. Wow. You must be so happy. <sighs> but yeah, no, 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 no. This is all just uh these are all just peaceful guys, peaceful people. We're all just taking this out of context and stuff. Anyway. Anyway. Um, am I done with the Super Chats? I think I'm done with the Super Chats. Okay. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'll be back soon. I'll be back soon. Look at this guy. This guy's also one of these... Uh, Nazi guys, Ryan Dawson, he said, I'm disgusted that the world just allows ethnic cleansing. Hamas gave Israel a well-deserved spanking. And Israel responds by bombing civilians who have no air defense. What he's saying is Hamas gave Israel a well-deserved spanking by killing 1,400 people, abducting them, torturing them, raping them, burning them, and so on. But Israel just responds to it. And then he says, Ye was right which means Kanye West, he was right when he said that the Jews are in charge and the Jews are evil. These are the Nazi guys here. But no, 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 no. I can't say that. I'm not, I shouldn't I shouldn't label him a Nazi. I shouldn't label him a Jew hater. No, this guy is just, uh, he's just, just, you know, he just wants to question the narrative. People are sick.
You're sick. You are sick. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is the dumbest, more, most moronic thing I've seen in a while. American patriots stand with Palestine, and then he's there holding a gun in his, in his luxurious place. Uh, apparently, that's not what is the definition of American patriots, according to this guy. Gladly not according to most American patriots. To take a gun out and be in some fancy place and stand with terrorists stand with the jihadists fantastic so brave so amazing wow 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 i think jack sninkle should go to gaza and should place himself in the middle of it and then be and then stand with them right there where they are standing that would be nice all right thanks for watching everybody i will be back have a fantastic day and as always, as always, um, <laughs> not that. Stay well, stay good, and as always, stay away from Islam. <laughs>